Well, hi everyone, this is Don Smith, and I would like to welcome you to my May tip of the month. And this month, um, I finally have gotten off the road. I'm not complaining. We do, we have done some really great workshops over the course of the last 12, 13 weeks, but I have to admit that the travel has been quite intense, and I'm looking forward to being home for the, about the next three and a half weeks. And then it's off to New Zealand and two workshops with Gary Hart over in New Zealand. It's going to be early winter for them over there. I have a couple of spots left open in each workshop. I should say we have a couple of spots open. It's Gary and I teaching this workshop together. And then it's on to Namibia. And we're having to close that workshop off, unfortunately, this Sunday night, which is going to be May 27th because... We are just in prime locations in Namibia, and the hotels need our rooming list. So if you want to make a last-minute run to either New Zealand or Namibia, uh, go ahead and uh, email me. And then a lot of you also know that Ron Madra and I uh, went down to Patagonia about a month ago, and we are planning a workshop this February that we are going to do in Patagonia, which will be there late summer, early fall, and I can just tell you it is drop-dead gorgeous down there. We have two spots open for that, and then Gary and I added a couple of Oregon Coast workshops. One sold out within a day, and I have two spots left open, or again, we have two spots left open in the second workshop. So if you're interested in any of those, please go to my website, www.donsmithphotography.com. Check them out. Send me an email. I am home <laughs> and I would be happy to respond to you. I'm just getting caught up on some much needed rest. Well, let's move on to the tip of the month. And this is a software I learned about just a short time ago. Um, I was actually watching a segment on um, Charlie Kramer, who is just an amazing photographer and a Photoshop expert. And Charlie talked about in one of his videos um, that he sharpens his images with a plugin called Focus Magic and really didn't go into any detail on it. So I thought I would check it out and I downloaded a copy of it and installed it. It's just a plugin. And I was blown away by actually working on this image. And I'm going to take my little zoom tool and I'm going to zoom up. I shot just, just the other day in Carmel, California, down by Carmel uh, State River Beach. And for those local in the area, or if you've been on one of my Big Sur workshops, we call it Monastery Beach. We shoot there quite often. This is called Echium. A lot of people, including myself, thought this was a form of a lupin, uh, but I have since been informed over the last couple of years, it's called Echium. And it's really an invasive species, which is unfortunate because it's very beautiful to photograph. And I was just um, kind of wandering along the trail looking for potential sites to photograph and didn't have my Sony cameras with me, but I did have my iPhone with me and started shooting. I just could not pass the scene by without taking out a camera of some sort and I took out my iPhone 10 and started taking some pictures and you can see that you know the top of this first foreground echium is a little out of focus and I'm going to show you what focus magic can do but first of all what is focus magic um, well it really and this is kind of coming from their website these are not my words but focus magic uses advanced forensic straight deconvolution technology to literally undo blur. So it can repair both out of focus uh, images or slightly soft focus. I don't know if I'd go to the extent, if it's out of focus, it's out of focus. But something like this soft focus, you're gonna see it work its magic. And I'm also learning about how it can work with stars. And if you get a little too much streaking on your stars, it can, revert that back to pinpoints of light, which I need to play with, and I'll maybe down the line do another um, video on that. But it, they, they're claiming they're the only software that can significantly recover lost detail from blurry images. So what is this advanced deconvolution software? Well, essentially, they talk about unsharp mask or sharp, and as we're all used to in Photoshop, and uh, that's just some fancy algorithm and mathematics that um, really 
is doing nothing more than increasing edge and midtone contrast on edges within the midtone, I should say. Um, Painters used it as a technique to make their images look sharper. If we increase the contrast on something, it looks sharper. But that's not the way this program worked. Works rather. Um, they talk about continuous gradations of color and tone are converted into points on a sampling grid. Now this is if you're going out to print and detail that's finer than the sampling frequency is averaged into pixels softening the overall look. And I know a lot of you have gone out to print on your images, including myself, and it comes back and, and that's really, you know, kind of the, how much do I sharpen? Am I over sharpening this? Am I making it crunchy? Well, this is gonna take all the guesswork out of it for you because you only apply it to the print once it's finished being processed, once it's sized to go off to the printer, then you're gonna go ahead and run this program. So let's take a look at this. this. This is an image right out of my iPhone. I uh, just made sure I, I set my white and black points as I teach in my workshops all the time. And I have to admit this JPEG was really almost on the mark. Um, this was under soft uh, overcast light that's been um, prevalent on the coast since the condo, the Sony condo event, which we'll save that for another time. That was actually a great event. And it's just intensified. In fact, I live about 17 miles inland as the crow flies. And we haven't seen much sunshine around where I live in the last couple of weeks either. So what I'm going to do here is, once again, we want to take care of the tip of this echium and sharpen it up. You can see back in here, these echiums are really sharp. And then if we go way back into the corners or the, the background here, they sort of naturally drift off into softer focus, which is fine. That's, that's what I would expect and that's what I want out of this picture. So how do we go about doing this? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Command J, Command or Control J, Command if you're on a Mac, and that's just going to make a duplicate layer over here of the image. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the sharpening on this image. I never want to do it on my background image. So when you load in, and I can't speak for Windows, but they give very detailed instructions how to load this. I'm going to come down to out of focus, and I'll finish my thought here while it's um, coming up on the screen. As you can see, that's right, I wanted to have this splash screen up here to tell you that the cost of this plugin is only $65 and I am trying to become an affiliate. Okay, so when we open up the Focus Magic box, and I now have the software registered, you are going to see, first of all, this little splash box come up. This is basically it. You're gonna see image source and we can, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this as a digital camera. And you can see you do get quite a, quite a bit of different options here, but this is the one I've played with and it works the best. Now, the blur width, um, I'm gonna show you this in a minute, but first of all, what we're going to do is you gotta come up here in this screen and you can see this little red square box up there. It's hard to see. What I wanna do is I wanna pull it down onto an edge of what is out of focus. So I'm gonna try, to, if you see the before and after screens you're seeing, I'm trying to place it over a, uh, a, par a portion of the Echium Bloom here that we are gonna get sharpened over here. So I can run Auto Detect and it picks up this blur width of two. And if I wanted to increase the sharpness, I could click up, but I'm telling you in just my tests, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it with what it auto detects. And I'm gonna click that one more time to make sure it is at two. Now the amount, I'm just gonna leave it at 100% and I'm gonna show you why. That's why I came over here and created a layer. And we're just gonna leave remove noise and auto and we're gonna click okay. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. Well, that one actually took no time, so I apologize. <laughs> but as the files get bigger and come off, of, let's say if I had my Sony a7R 3 and I have a huge file coming off of this, it could take a little bit because again, this isn't just running an algorithm to increase edge contrast. We're working on deconvolution technology here. 
So now what I want to do is I want to blow up this area of the echium here, and I'm going to turn this on and off. So as you can see, it has gotten sharper. Now, has it sharpened it as much as here or here? No. So let's, let's trash that layer and see if we went ahead. Excuse me, I'm going to drag that into the trash. And now we're back to the original image. And I'm going to hit Command J, Command or Control J again. I'm going to come up under Filter. It's good to see this again. Go to Focus Magic. We're going to go to Out of Focus Blur, not Motion Blur. And we're going to take this little red square. And let's try pulling it over something else that's maybe a little bit. There we go. You want a little more out of focus. You want to find those edges. And we're going to hit Auto Detect. It's still detecting it at 2. So let's just bump that up a little bit more. Let's try that up to four. Again, amount stays at 100%. Remove noise stays at auto. We click OK. And you can see now it's starting to do some crunching here. And we'll just see how long this takes. And I'll come back to you when it's done. All right, we're back here. And that took just about 90 seconds to complete that task. So let's take the Zoom tool again. Zoom in. And I'm going to turn off the effect, and I'm going to turn it back on. Off and on. And I'm thinking I'm liking this a little bit more now. So let's go ahead, and we're going to size this down. By the way, if you notice I have a white background here, uh, this is another what I'll call Charlie Kramerism that I learned. And I actually learned this years ago when I took a class with Charlie um, about how the eye sees. And I plan to do some videos on this in, in the future. And I teach at my workshops to have either a light gray background or a white background. And it just allows you to see uh, the brightness of the image and the luminosity of the image a lot better. And I, I will plan on doing a future tip of the month on that subject. All right, now here's the problem. We've gotten this sharpened up, but if you look up here, we've really crunched out the sharpness on all that, okay? So how do we deal with that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Follow the cursor down to below here on the Layers palette. And the third icon in from the left, it's a little rectangular shape with the black dot, that's a mask. And if you're not used to masking at all, this is going to be your first introduction to it. Anything that's white, I'm going to see the full effect of what's underneath. Uh, anything that's black is going to block that effect out. So what I want to do is change this white to black. Well, that's very easy to do. I come up here in Photoshop under my edit command. I go to fill and the fill box will come up and it'll say, do you want to fill it with the foreground color? Well, what's my foreground color? My foreground color is black. So if it's not, just click on either that little small double squared icon and get the black to come up to the top or hit these arrows and you can flip it around that way. So I'm going to hit OK, fill that with black. And now you see that the image has gone back to its original state. Well, so the black is just hiding or masking, and that's the key word here, out the sharpness we want to apply. But it's making the rest of the image look rather good. So now, a couple things we have to do. We're going to actually paint in just this section here of the sharpness. So over here on the palette to the left, I'm going to find my brush. And the easiest way to do that is tap B for brush. Okay. Also, I want to come up here and I want to look at the opacity of the brush. I want to paint in 100% of the effect. So I'm going to leave that at 100%. Lastly, if my black, if my mask is black, excuse me, I have to paint the opposite of it, which is white. So you saw I just hit that little double-sided arrow there and it went to white. Before we start painting, let's go Z for zoom and blow this up a little bit and center this so you can really see what we're doing. I think that might be too much. We'll just go right about there. Let's go back to B. We are white. Our mask is black. We're at 100% opacity. And I'm going to tap the right bracket key just to bring this up. And what I'm going to do is start to paint in what was out of focus on the echium and just bring that part in. Okay, let's take a look at the mask over here. If you hit um, option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and click on the layer, you're going to get the mask. 
Now you're gonna see the mask um, already had some feathering applied and that feathering is a transition. We don't really want a hard edge in there. And if you wanna change that transition, you can come up here and um, you can, well, excuse me. Now we're gonna do this a little bit differently. We are going to right click and we could set the hardness instead of zero, we can move it up. But at the fault, you're gonna get a little bit of transition. Uh, but if it's not enough, that's the way you go about doing it. So I wanna get my picture back. How do I do that? We'll come back over, put the little hand back on the mask, hit the option, Alt key, click. And there's the picture. So let's size it back to where it looks kind of normal again. And let's turn the eyeball off. See before, after, before, after. I tend to think I went a little too much by going up to four. Not a problem. We're on a layer. Come over here. I've got an opacity. I can take that down. I can bump it into taste. Um, when I teach in my workshops, I always tell people go a little beyond what you think it should be because you have this opacity and you can tone it down. Now, a lot of Photoshop teachers will teach you differently. They'll say, start with a lower opacity and build up. Either way is gonna work. I'd rather get 100% of the opacity and then control it over here with a slider where my eye can see the change. Okay, so now we've really got this looking about uh, where I want. And all I need to do now is command or, con uh, command or control E and that's going to put it down to one layer. Um, if you are interested in Focus Magic, and I'm telling you really for the price, this, this is just amazing technology to see. And go on their website and check out the video they have on taking the star trails and making them pinpoint again. I think this is well worth the price. It's www.focusmagic.com. So until next month, uh, when I'll be just about ready to leave for New Zealand, this is Don Smith, and we will see you next time.